All right, so now that you have an animation that that you've done, this is just gonna. I'm just gonna show the rig, but assuming that you have your animation uh, finished on it, you've you've animated your bro. It does a whole bunch of cool stuff, and and now you want to see it in a game engine. Well, what you're gonna do is you're going to export two different ways, uh, or two different things that you need to to export. First of all, you need to export this guy. Um, this is going to be your T pose guy, and you're going to have uh, basically just it's it's going to be animation free. This is just the rig, and all you really need to have is the meshes, and them skinned to a joint hierarchy. So once you have that all in there, uh, you can now export it. Um, if you're using Maya LT, then you can actually export it directly into uh, Unreal or Unity, but you can also export it as .fbx. Um, and that that works just fine. So uh, we've already got these exported as a .fbx. If you're using any of the Kyle Figgins rigs, then you um, you should be receiving some of those uh, in FBX form, uh, which will look like these. So this one here is going to be the character guy. This is just your straight. Uh, like if I were just to throw it into here you'll notice that they come in super small. And that is because uh, when they come in, they, they come in at a tenth of their size. That is just a, uh, a Unity preset. So you can actually fix that uh, by going into your, into your presets and, and, and uh, uh, or rather into your settings and your preferences and then fix that. Um, but you can also, one other way that you can do it is literally just by uh, bringing it up in scale, and that works just fine too. So there's your guy, and then once you save it as a prefab, um, you'll have you'll have this this bro just literally running around your scene, and you'll notice that this has all of the same stuff that you would have in uh, uh, just in your Maya directory. So it's uh, it's everything that you would find in the attribute editor, just in Unity. So that's something that uh, is, is definitely good to take note of. So um, that means that anything that you have in your scene is also going to come through, um, and that might ne not necessarily be a good thing if you don't have a clean scene. So we're going to close this guy, uh, because Figgins has been gracious enough to give us this guy, <clears throat> which is your animated version. So now that we have our animated version, I'm just going to toss him in there. And you will notice that it does nothing. And that's a huge bummer. So what we actually do need to attach to this is we need to use his, his uh, running animation. And the running animation is going to uh, be created by creating an animation controller. Um, so if you actually want to see your, your, your guy running around in your scene, uh, you can do that by going to create... Uh, animation controller, and we will call this uh, Bro Run. Uh, you would probably call it Shotgun Grunt if that, because that's what Figgins has here. And so, uh, then then just call it, you know, whatever your animation controller is actually going to be. So in this case, we want to, uh, f we just want to see the animation. So on entry, uh, what we're going to do is grab the animation from here. And now, whatever it does, it's just going to come and continually do this. And we want to make sure that the speed is at 1, um, the cycle of the offset is at 0, you can mirror the animation if you really need to. You can even set it to loop or not loop um, in here. So you can make a point of it to just on transitioning and stuff. So now that we have that uh, going through, and this is specifically for animators, so right now I'm just assuming that all you want to do is see your animation. Um, so now that we have that, uh, what we can do is select this guy, and then um, you will notice that if I drop him in here, he has no animation attached to him. And you can do that by creating this, dragging and dropping it into here, and now our bro run has uh, an animation attached to it, So, which we can actually use uh, right here as well. So uh, now our bro... It looks like he's just standing there, but when we load and run it, you will see that he is running. 
And you can see that it will do all the same stuff that uh, Figgins' little bro is doing. So um, it automatically switches over to the game. But now you can see your animation in-game uh, doing his little runny bit, uh, which is great. So this particular guy, as you can see, is going to be taking from here. I, to be honest, I think that we could probably just do this without this. We probably don't even need that. Um, and that'll clean up your scene a little bit. Yep. So you can literally just take the animation straight from straight from here, uh, from the running animation. I think I pulled in um, a, a run file that didn't have the rig with it. So uh, you will need the rig and then the run animation to go associated with it. Um, so that's it for Unity. Uh, now we're going to switch gears. And, uh, oh, if you want to see it with texture also, you can bring in your... Uh, you can also bring in the, the texture directory, and that'll bring in all of the textures that, that you've got associated with it. Um, just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to slap one or two of them on, just so that you can see that it works. Um, so if I were to grab this, for example, you can add a component to it. Um, for this particular one, I actually don't want to do it that way. I kind of want to just do it through the meshes. So if you select the mesh, you'll see that it actually has a matte body attached to it. Um, and then from here, uh, you can assign it a shader. And in the shader, you'll see that it's got like albedo and talic and, and uh, he has actually graciously called them like albedo and metallic and, and all the things that they actually need to be called, which is pretty great. Um, there is also a way to export the FBX um, to have all that stuff already attached and just kind of bring in a package and that should work. So that's for the Unity one. Um, now we're going to switch gears and go check out the Unreal version. So uh, I've actually created just an empty blank scene. It came in with all of the stuff that you would uh, expect it to come with, which would be, I think, two chairs and a table. And then I just wiped out the chairs and the table and then just duplicated these floor pieces. Um, so. Now what we can do is do the same exact thing that we did before, which is grab the shotgun bro. And then when we bring it in, you'll see that this is a different dialog box. Now I'm going to bring in the other one first, just so that you can see how, what happens if I do that. If I bring in this one first, you'll notice that we don't have anything to assign it because we don't have a skeleton. There's no skeletons in this scene, so we have nothing to assign it, so it won't let us bring it in. Because this is literally just the animation. So what we want to do is bring in the guy first. So we have our guy, and we can import everything that we need to go for it, which will import the skeleton. And you'll see that here uh, once it's done loading. There it is. And this one comes up with a couple of different errors, but it's, it's simply because of like the the uh, the influence count is at like 13 instead of the the max version of eight, uh, which is kind of a bummer. But um, I don't think that was intentional. I think that was just on the export options. So, um, but it'll still work fine. So we'll do that. Um, and then we'll bring in the associated animation. So now we have an animation that we can now put on here. And we're going to say, this is going to go with the shotgun character. So now we can actually bring it in. And that's because we have a skeleton that we can dump this thing onto. So we're going to import this. And then he'll be represented here. There he is. Uh, so now I'm actually just going to drop this guy right into the scene. Um, and then for the sake of everything, I'm actually going to... Uh, would you move up, buddy? Uh, for the sake of all of this, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. And I'm just going to up his scale. So there we go. So now he is clearly not pointed in the right direction. Um, so you can do that simply by, and your hotkeys here are, like, are, are the same that you would expect for any program, for Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max, uh, Unity, pretty much anything. Um, w for, for translate, E for, uh, for rotation, and then uh, R for scale. So we're going to take this guy, we're going to rotate him just so that he's sort of facing forward and, um, to what we're doing because um, I have a camera over here. So I'm actually just going to take this camera and move it back a little bit because it looks like he might run into the camera. And uh, if I grab this guy and then just test it out, you can see that it's moving as expected. 
uh, and going right past the camera. That's fun. Um, so we'll move this back a little bit further. It looks like looks like he's got him moving pretty far in space. So we'll try that again. And as would be expected, there he goes. So now we can see that this guy is moving in space. He's doing everything that he needs to do. And now as an animator, you are now seeing your character moving in an engine. And you can test things like frame rate and stuff like that while you're doing it. So I hope this has helped. Uh, this is literally just a crash course in how to see your animation in game. Um, and uh, obviously you can take this and then expand on it by, uh, for example, you could, you could create more animation controls. So and instead of having just one little thing where your, your bro is running, you can now have it attached to a movement controller and then now you can move this guy around. And uh, I mean the, the possibilities are endless. This is literally what a game, what this particular game engine is good for. Um, so you can test all of that stuff and, uh, and just make sure that they work in your game. So uh, I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next one. Thanks.